Let me take you back to a moment in time that changed basically how I watch technology basically forever. Last year we were planning a family holiday and we went to Sri Lanka with, uh, with my family, three kids. And normally planning such a family trip would mean for us really a lot of hassle. I would, I would create a folder, put all the information in there, some spreadsheets, and I would always end up searching for yeah, basically all the information, but couldn't find anything. So this time I thought I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to build myself an um, AI agent for me. Um, so a travel companion, some personalized assistants that would tell us where we would go, what places we would see, uh, what kind of animals we could expect uh, on our trip in this beautiful country. And the good thing was that if we were at some really nice spot, we could just take a picture and just ask like, hey, what is this spot that we're looking at? And it was really great. And it didn't really replace our experience, but it deepened it. And then it hit me that AI is not about replacing people. It's about enhancing people. And today I want to share you why I believe that AI basically is the best thing that happened to us. It's not just a technological revolution. It's a human one, really a human one. And throughout history, knowledge has been power. I mean, if you had the key to knowledge, you had the power. We all know that. Like, and it was only available to a few people. And in the old days, it was the priests who, yeah, who could read and write. Uh, and later, it was the universities and libraries uh, who held the books. And even in modern times, it was just people who could remember the most information or who could retrieve facts and figures the fastest. And yeah, it was also the people who were the loudest in the, in, in the meetings that we were that really thought that they had all the information. But AI is changing that. Everyone has the key now. Everyone has this connection to the knowledge that we have. So the tools that we can use today, they are trained on our collective knowledge. Everything that's written down, everything that's shared, that's discovered online, it's available to anyone within seconds. I mean, just think of the small business owner competing to this huge corporation. Um, they have the same access to the same insights or the student somewhere in South Africa or somebody living in a shanty town there surrounded by gang violence, drug violence and looking for a way out. They have the same access to knowledge as someone in an elite university. And just a fun fact, I mean, we, we all have like, like mobile telephones and if you open that, you have access to the internet. You have access to knowledge. Just realize yourself that you have more access to knowledge than Bill Clinton had in the 90s when he was president of the United States. So there is basically the real change. We all have access to the same knowledge and the advantage is not to those who know the most, but what you do with it. And one of the shifts we need to make isn't about technology, but it's in our mind. I mean, the people response to AI was at some point it was anxiety, concern, Doubt, fear, will it take my job or not? And of course, those concerns are understandable, but there's an alternative perspective. Focus on possibility rather than fear. What if we reframe the way we can think about AI? Not as replacing us, but as an amplifier for our human capabilities. I think that AI is really connected to autonomy, that we can choose how we work best. It's the same as uh, maybe some decades ago, this carpenter that went to his workplace, but he brought his own hammer. There was a hammer that he chose. And we have that possibility now as well. We can customize our own tools. No one size fits all imposed from the company that we work for, but personalized, selected by you. Because, yeah, you might need some, some yeah, creative brainstorming assistant, while I need some data analysis. And I think AI's biggest promise is not to replace the human thoughts, but as a tool that can enhance us. But yeah, let's make it real. What does this tool look like in practice? You know, just, just small town, things that you could do today, tomorrow, what, what anyone could do right now. And this is what I call actually my AI swarm. So it's your specialized assistants in AI helping you with their unique capabilities and working together. And unlike traditional people that you work with, they don't fall asleep, they don't get sick, they don't go on holidays, uh, that's also, I mean, so your knowledge is there. They can help you every day to do your tasks. Let me introduce you to two people. First, we have social media Mike. And for the people who read really closely, it's Mike, it's with AI. I thought it was funny. <laughs> social media Mike helps us at Han University with writing the social media posts that we have. 
and we save almost four hours per week using Mike in our processes. And this is an example from work, but it doesn't have to be work alone. Um, as, a, as a person who trains for full, uh, full distance triathlons, I created Tristan. He's my triathlon coach. He helps me with my training schedules, with my nutrition advice, with recovery and injury. And just think about it. If you look at these people, and for those who are wondering, are these real people? No, they're not. I built them. But if you think about it, I mean, if you could have the possibility to design your own AI team, what roles would help you? What, what areas of your life would really benefit? Maybe you also need some, some, some data analysis person that would help you, or uh, a learning coach, or a shopping assistant. Just think about it. I mean, everything is possible. And why this approach is working is not because we did something like, okay, let's build some AI tool and just hope it works. No, it's, it's, it followed a structured process and it's grounded in the logic of digital transformation. And this framework shows that change happens really in stages. So uh, first you have the, the stage that you digitize uh, information. So getting knowledge from your head on paper and into the computer. And the next step is that you organize this information. So maybe you put it in a folder uh, and that you can share with other people. And for a lot of people, this is already really a lot. And that's okay, because that's where it starts. Then if you would take it to some next steps, you can automate processes or streamline processes and even change the way how you work, how you collaborate. And with every step, there's more power unlocked. And it's just not a tech or a technical process. It's really a mindset. It's not like, how can I do what I do now bigger or faster or more efficiently, but it's more of mindset like, okay, what if I start from zero? What if I start from scratch and I had AI as my partner with me? How would I build these processes? How would I do that? And that's how I built my swarm. I looked at where I spent my time, where were my repetitive tasks, my time consuming tasks, and where could I interact with AI to help me with that? I set the direction, but my swarm executes. And I still do the creative part, you know, the part that only humans can do. So how do you start your own journey into AI? And let's see, okay, if you interact with AI, you will come down to prompting really quickly. And there is this 3C framework that helped really a lot of people. And I didn't make this up. This is from Heather Murray, a woman from England. Please follow her. She's really great. But she talks about character, context, and clarity. and just when you think about character, it's, it's what you do when you talk to an LLM. It's like, it's, it's a role play. It's like you are a, um, yeah, think of something, you are a LinkedIn ghostwriter. I am an online marketing coordinator. Or you are a uh, TEDx consultant, and I'm a pretty nervous first-time TEDx speaker. But it's a role play. Just give, give it to that. Tell that to the AI. And provide the context. Like, okay, I work at a... Uh, University of Applied Sciences with 30,000 students, 40,000 students and 5,000 employees in the Netherlands. Just give it the context and be really clear about your outputs. Do you expect a bullet point list, a detailed document, or do you want a creative brainstorm? If you put these things when you talk with an LLM in your prompting, then you will get like really good output. Good input is good output. But there's one crucial principle I really want to emphasize, and that is keep the human in the loop, or maybe even in the lead, because AI is really convincing, even when it's wrong. So always use your judgment. Is it correct what I'm getting back? Is it correct what I'm using? And of course, this transformation comes with a lot of important ethical considerations. And one that is really pressing is, of course, the data privacy. And for me, a simple rule that I hold whenever I talk with AI is what I put in might come out. We just don't know when, where, or with whom. But if you wouldn't share it publicly, then don't feed it into AI. That is a rule that you can keep in your head. And this AI-powered society that I see that values authenticity, connection, choice, creativity, and justice. And you're not judged by your background in this society or by your education or your network, but how you use your combination of talents and tools that will benefit you or those people around you. You're judged by impact. So now think for yourself, what would your ideal day look like if you had AI with you? If you could give these boring tasks to AI? Now let's return to Sri Lanka. When I watch my family there, myself and, and, and my children interact with this beautiful country, it really is a beautiful country, by the way, um, and with the AI assistant, I realized something big. Tech and the technology wasn't replacing our 
experience, it was really enhancing it. It didn't distract, it made us more connected. It made the moment richer, really it did. And AI is not the end of human work. AI is the beginning of human potential, of an equal world. And I really believe we stand on the threshold of a fundamental shift from systems that limit us to technology that empowers us. A world where you can bring your own tools, your own AI team, and where autonomy, connection, and creativity are central. And this future that we imagine, it's already here. But let's actively shape it, and not with fear, but with vision. And not with just rules, but space for exploration. And maybe more important, let's do it together. Thank you.